Okay, I just left the Walmart. I stopped in here for nothing, but I didn't realize it until I got in there. Well, it wasn't completely for nothing. I got two things. I got a drink. It's gonna kill me one day. These are bad for you. Don't drink them. <sighs> Woo! Sorry if you don't like drinking sounds, but I'm dying out here. It's hot. It is a hot. It's hot. And what else did I get? I got one other thing. This is not what I came in here for at all, but I'm trying to make lemonade out of lemons here. I found this. A couple of y'all talked about this stuff right here. O'Keefe's Lip Repair. I think this is this is it. I found this in the lip balm section by the in the pharmacy. Cooling relieves extremely dry, cracked lips. Now I do like O'Keefe's. Um, their skin products are really great. I don't have any right now, but I have some. I keep I always keep a little thing of lotion here. I just wash my hands inside, and I always like to put on a little lotion after I wash my hands. So, I'm still having trouble with my lips. Um, it hasn't gotten worse, but it really hasn't gotten any better. I have eliminated everything I can think of that could be causing a problem. Like, literally everything. I have, I'm not using CO Bigelow products at all. I'm not putting anything on my face that would irritate anything. I've been using this. I've been using Aquaphor. I have this in a, an ointment or a lip repair, whatever, and I have it in a balm. It doesn't really seem to be doing anything. My lips, they're not chapped. They just feel very irritated all the time. They, I don't know how to describe it. I've never had anything like it. I've had chapped lips before. I know what that's like. It's not that. It's something totally different. It better not be my Pepsis because they just kill me now. Just kill me now. I'm going to live with irritated lips if it's that. Because we are not eliminating the Pepsis. No. Nothing short of a, a, an apocalypse is going to eliminate the Pepsis. Isn't it cute? Look, look at this little baby. Little tube. Oh. They care about me. See, they put a seal on it. So, I don't know if it's been tampered with or not. That's sweet. It's good to know that people care. I can't open it. I don't want to mess up my nails. I have a knife in here. I can get my knife out. I do keep a knife in here, among other things. All right, we'll try. Oh, it's like a little thing of deodorant. It has. <laughs> it's like a little thing. Of, it's like deodorant. <laughs> there we go. It's like a little stick of deodorant. <laughs> I won't do that. Ugh. Ooh, I like the way it feels. Oh, it feels nice. It's definitely has some menthol or something in it. You can feel it. It's like, ooh, like rubbing a cough drop on your lips. Okay, well, I'll try the O'Keeffe's for a few days and see how that goes. No, I stopped by here because I have my new insurance card. You know, I have new insurance. Um, I, I did away with the, the asshole insurance company. I'm self-insured and my insurance was awful. I, I, I'm with a new company now, a new insurance company, and I have my new card, and I was gonna come in here because I have to pick up my Synthroid medicine, but I wanted to see if I could get it cheaper. I pay, ca I pay a cash price for my Synthroid. You can get generic Synthroid at Walmart. You can get a three-month supply for $12. A 90-day supply for $12 is really good. So that's what I've just been paying cash for it. But I wanted to see if using my insurance card would make it any cheaper. I don't know. It might not make a difference. Um, but I was going to come up here and check. I called them and they said, just come in and bring your insurance card and we'll run it. You know, we'll make a copy of your card and we'll run it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. So I got done at Kohl's over there. And then I came across the street to the Walmart. I love that boy's hair. Oh, there's this kid over here. I love his hair. He has dark hair and it's cut short except for this here. And he's got it swooped over and it's bleached out and it has green in it. It is so cool. I want to do that to my hair. Cut it short and have like a swoop with some green in it. That would look cool as hell. Sorry. So I was going to bring my insurance card by here and let them run, you know, try it with that. But I forgot 
the pharmacy closes from 1.30 to 2. And I got here at 1.30 on the dot. Because I'm just, I'm good. Right when they were closing, the, pulling the little door thing down to close the pharmacy for 30 minutes. That actually, it doesn't bother me. I, I, I forgot, but as soon as I saw what time it was, I said, yep, yeah, it's lunchtime. I'm actually glad they do that for the pharmacist especially. I worked in retail and hospital pharmacy for a number of years when I was younger. And when I worked in retail pharmacy, not so much in hospital, but in retail pharmacy, there were so many days, especially at this one store. I worked at this one drug store for a long time, for like three years, where the pharmacy, the store was open 8 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week. And the pharmacy was also open 8 a.m. to midnight, which was much, it was earlier and later than every other drug store in the area. So we got slammed after about nine o'clock at night. Between 9 p.m. and midnight, a lot of people would come in because there was, an, there was a, an urgent care not far away and that was also open until midnight. And anybody at the urgent, urgent care would come over to our drugstore because they would tell them, well, this, this Eckerd's down here is open until midnight if you want to get your prescription filled now. We even had Matthew Broderick came in, come in one time. Yeah, he was in Wilmington. I, I, he was doing something there. He wasn't on vacation. He was filming something. And he ended up with uh, like a sinus infection or something and went to that urgent care. He was by himself, went to that urgent care and came in to get a prescription filled. That was wild. That was crazy. It was late at night too. And uh, yeah, he was by himself. He's very nice, you know. <laughs> this is bizarre. Okay, what was I talking about? Oh, so a lot of the, a lot of the pharmacists would complain and I get it. If they don't get a lunch break, it's hard some days to even get a bathroom break. If you just need to run to the restroom, it's hard to go because people are just coming in, not like they are having to deal with people nonstop. And eventually they would just have to go, you're gonna have to wait. I will be right back. Like I have to go. I, I need a bathroom break. Will you just give me five minutes? And the customers would get mad. It's like that pharmacist has been working five, six, seven, eight hours straight with no break. You'll be okay if you have to stand here and wait a minute. People don't want to wait. They get mad. I was really glad when they passed a law in the state that requires pharmacies to close. Like, they just completely close for lunch. I think they have to close at least 30 minutes. And depending on how long the pharmacist's shift is, they, they are required to be given a certain number of breaks. And I am all for it. Because these poor people, I feel so bad for them. Like if, sometimes the pharmacists where I worked, they'd have to work a 12 hour shift and there were no breaks. There were like no breaks. Sorry, I keep getting phone calls, but they're not, they're not important. That was a telemarketer, I'm pretty sure. They would get no breaks. And I mean, if it was, if you went through a slow period, they might have 10 minutes to eat lunch, maybe, but not 10 uninterrupted minutes. No, I mean, they were having to just eat really fast and run in and help people eat a little bit more. And when it was, I felt sorry for him. I thought this, I mean, as a pharmacy tech, I got a break. I could go to the break room and eat my lunch or just, you know, take a break for a half hour. I could do that. The pharmacist can't do it because most of the time when I was working there, there were, there was only one pharmacist working most of the time and they had to be back there. You cannot leave the pharmacy unattended and you, I think you have to have a pharmacist back there pretty much at all times. Drinking sounds, I'm sorry. I don't like them either, but I'm dying. I'm dying. It's everyday Mary. You get everyday Mary. I think I've yawned at y'all a few times. <laughs> sorry. So I did not get to give them my insurance card. I guess I'll just have to do it another day. I'll get back out here. <sighs> so, yeah. Well, I was going to tell you about my dad's dog. Okay, my dad's dog. <laughs> my dad has the cutest dog. He's a cute dog. I have to post a picture of him. His name is Rufus. He's this little black and white dog. He is adorable. He is so cute, his little face. And he's one of these dogs that has little pointy ears that kind of flop over like that. He's so cute. He always looks very curious. Just, huh? All the time. What? He's very energetic. 
he, he's bad to jump up on people. My dad has been working with him to get him to not jump up on people, but he, he just jumps up on people. He gets all excited, you know? My dad got this dog. Somebody just gave him this dog. I don't know. He was part of a litter of puppies, and somebody just gave my dad this little dog. And he was a little puppy. He's had him, I think he's had him about a year. And he's still very, very, very much like a puppy. He's very playful. He loves to play. Um, I think he gets lonely. You know, my dad doesn't play with him as much as I think he would like to be played with. And uh, so, so Rufus, all right, one day, this was uh, a couple of weeks ago. One day, Rufus disappeared. Now, my dad lives up in the mountains, literally on the side of a mountain. His front yard goes like that. I actually hurt my shoulder. I got a bruise, and it's very sore. When I got, I went to see him yesterday, and when I got there, I parked, and so you have to kind of push your door open. You have to be very careful that it does not slam on you because your, your, your car is like this, you know? So it's tilted. I had just gotten out of the car, and Rufus came running up to me. He came back. He came running up to me, and I was trying to get out of the car, and he jumped up on my leg. He, he, like, was jumping on my leg. Train tracks! La, 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 la. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think they're as bumpy as they used to be. I think they've smoothed them out somehow. So, Rufus jumped up, and I had shorts on, and he was hurting my leg, and I, I turned door was still open and I turned to like you know like stop Rufus trying to get him down and my door came swung back and it's kind of got a point like on the end up here and it slammed right into my shoulder right here and that point dug into my shoulder and now my shoulder is very sore and very bruised right there from that damn door it really hurt so but one day Rufus disappeared and he was gone for several days and my dad found out that he had ended up at this other house, like a mile away, at least a mile, like a mile as the crow flies away. It was this wealthy couple. There are actually quite a few very wealthy people up there where he is. And they will just buy the whole side of a mountain and put a big mansion on it. And it, you can see it from way off and it'll be the only house on that whole mountain. Just one big ass house with a clearing around it and this little winding driveway that goes up to it. Very wealthy. Well, any, R Rufus ended up at one of these people's houses and my dad found out he was there. So he went to these people's house, uh, you know, introduced himself, you know, they made the acquaintances and everything. And he said, and, and Rufus was there, like, this is my dog, you know. They said, yeah, we were wondering whose dog this was. Well, it was a husband and wife, and the wife said, I have really gotten attached to this dog over the last couple of days. He's been staying with us. I love this dog so much. I would really love to have this dog. My dad said, well, I tell you what. I tell you what we'll do. He seems really happy here, um, and I, I want him, I don't want to keep, if he doesn't want to be with me, I'm not going to force him to stay with me. I'll tell you what we'll do. I will take him home, and he he just told Rufus to get in the truck. He jumped in the truck. He said, I'm going to take him home. If he comes back, he's yours. Okay. So my dad took him back home. And he stayed there at my dad's house for a couple days. And then he left again. And he went back up to the, the other people's house. And uh, so my dad just thought, well, you know, I guess Rufus doesn't want to live here. Because he got their phone number and they called. Yeah, Rufus is here. Uh, you know. And my dad said, well, I guess that's where he wants to be, so okay. And, you know, he kind of made peace with it. But then, two days later, Rufus shows up back at my dad's house with another dog. He brought a friend with him. He brought another dog with him. This dog is a little bit smaller than Rufus, and Rufus is, like, black and white. This other dog is mostly black, and he has, it looks like he has, a, like, half a tail. His tail is maybe eight inches long. It's like a, stu a stubby little, I don't know if he was born that way. I don't know if something happened to his tail. If you were going to dock a dog's tail, you wouldn't leave it eight inches long like that, I wouldn't think. Not on purpose. He shows up with this totally separate additional dog. And my, my dad checked around. Nobody knows who the dog belongs to. Nobody had ever seen the dog before. 
just another dog. It was like Rufus 2.0. And basically, what happened was Rufus stayed just long enough for the other dog to sniff around everything, get comfortable. He lay down in the shade somewhere, went to sleep. And as soon as he fell asleep, Rufus left and went back to the other people's house. <laughs> He's like, okay, I got you. I got your replacement. I have trained my replacement. I'm taking off now. I gotta go. He just left the other dog there at my dad's house. <laughs> but yeah, so after that, my dad checked around like, whose dog is this? Nobody, nobody anywhere around has ever seen this dog. Nobody knows whose dog it is. They don't know where it came from. It just, it, Rufus found him. Rufus found his replacement and left him at my dad's house and went back to the other people's house. I have never heard of anything like that. So, so my dad said, well, I don't really know. I guess this is just my dog now. I don't know whose dog it is. I don't know where he came from. He's very cute. He's very cute. The other dog, the new Rufus, I don't know what he's going to name him. He's very calm. Rufus is all, ee! I think he's got some Jack Russell or something in him. This dog is very calm. He's just like, hey, he's like, he's like Chong, you know, hey, he doesn't jump on you. He doesn't go crazy. He just comes up and he'll just sit next to you. Like, it'd be really cool if you would pet me. You know, I would like that. And if you don't pet him, he'll just take his paw and just kind of, do like this on your on your leg, like, hey, hey, you know what would be cool? It'd be really cool if you would pet me. You're not doing anything right now. Could you pet me? That'd be great. Thank you. He's just very calm. So when I went up there yesterday, Rufus was there. My dad said Rufus comes and visits every few days and he'll stay for an afternoon and then leave again. He just goes between the two houses. I think he's spending most of his time now at the other house. But he still comes to see my dad and he, hey, you know, you good? Everything going all right with the new the new guy? Cool. Yeah, my dad said this, yeah, he's a good dog. He's stayed here ever since Rufus dropped him off. He just lives here now. I have never seen anything like that in my life. It was crazy. So I said, well, you know, basically now you have one and a half dogs. Because Rufus is part-time. He's just gone part-time now, and you got the new full-time guy here. So, I don't think my dad has come up with a name for him yet. But, yeah. So, now he has one and a half dogs. And nobody knows where the other one came from. So, and he has a little kitten. Someone abandoned some kittens down at the end of the road. And my dad kept one. He, well, he said that somebody saw another one down there. But when he went down there, there was only the one. They think something might have happened to the other one. Because my, let, my dad lives so far out, people just abandon animals down there all the time. And it's a very cute, tiny little kitten. It's kind of fluffy, but it's very loud. It's, it has a, yeah, he's very loud. He's very small. But he gets along fine with the dogs. You know, he's cool with them. And they don't, they don't hurt him or anything. So, anyway. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to post a picture of Rufus. I have a, I have a picture or two of him. I'll show you what he looks like. So anyway, I have to go. I have to go run some more errands, but um, eventually I'll get back home. I, I need I need to get back to work, but I wanted to take care of some stuff around town first. But thank you so much for being here. I really hope that your Wednesday is going well. I'm having a good day, and I don't really have anything else to report at this time. As far as I know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and for being here. I hope the rest of your day is awesome. And I'll see you again soon.